Soviet Union, 1941. Disaster save, as you can probably tell. This one's so bad, I'm not even gonna do an intro. We're just gonna look at it and go from there. So first off, the military situation. Other than your front lines being honestly disgusting, there's a couple of things we need to talk about. Namely, the giant bulge towards Moscow. Where are your troops? What happened here? How? Why? I don't know. Obviously, either something went wrong or you deliberately deleted these units to give me a hard time. Other than that, yeah, you've, you've lost the excellent Dnieper line, except for the northern bit. Don't, don't, don't attack. It's pointless. I think you can see it's quite literally pointless at this point. So yeah, that's not good. And we're about to lose Crimea unless something happens here. Or rather, this guy doesn't move. That would be even better. You know what I also just noticed? You have a second theater in Manchuria, where you have another 18, 19 divisions just sitting here. Never put troops on this border on historical. It's pointless. Japan will not attack you. Japan has other business it needs to attend to. Do not bother with this front. It's pointless. And I also just noticed that there are no allies. So Germany has already defeated the allies and I'm gonna assume, yeah, they, they puppet it like everything. Oh, there are still allies here. <laughs> The UK endures. Okay then. So military situation bad, but we can we can fix that. I'll go into that in a little bit. Now before we start, I want to mention our partner Data Seal, whose mission aligns very well with this channel. Have you ever been concerned about your home address, date of birth, or other personal information being readily available online for anyone to find? Well, Data Seal has developed an automated data removal solution that deletes your personal information from over 80 people search sites and data brokers. Use the link down below in the description and comments to run your free privacy scan to see if you are exposed and get 5% off your subscription. Then, political situation. Why are you on partial mobilization in 1941? The Soviet Union is one of the most powerful economies in the game, but not if you keep it hamstrung for half of the campaign. You can go to a war economy in the first year. So that's not good. We have 180-ish political power, so either we go to total mobilization now, we have the manpower to spare. We take something else. I'm thinking total mob is probably gonna be best. Uh, what else? Export focus doesn't really matter, I guess. You're already on surface by requirement, which is pointless. But then again, you've also lost half your country, so I guess you want the extra men. Why? You haven't even mobilized what you have already. So why are you mobilizing more? Doesn't make any sense. Don't go mass assaults. I know that you might think that this is the optimal way to play the Soviet Union, the historical way, the mass assault doctrine. Don't. I don't want to get into it, but pick literally anything else. My best bet is always superior firepower. And if you don't feel confident in your defense, and you want to have a little bit more of an insurance policy, get Grand Battle Plan. Like the first three here will boost your defense tremendously. But yeah, we are moving off mass assault as soon as that's feasible. Fortunately, static warfare, it's not good, but it, it might help. Stabilizing this, I also recommend picking up Elevated Engineering Corps, in this case for the extra entrenchment speed, so we can entrench faster, or maybe Professional Officer Corps to get a little bit of extra army XP. All in all, situation really not good. Speaking of really not good, your Air Force, you have none. So might as well delete everything we have. Industry, it's 19. 41 as the Soviet Union and you have 56 civilian factories built. Granted, you may have lost quite a few when Germany took half your, well, a, a significant part of your country, but you have 56 civilian factories built. That's not good, my friend. That's bad. So I don't know what you've been doing the first half of this game, but it sure as hell has not been playing. I, I'm sorry if I come off harsh here, but this is really really bad. You want to spend until 1938 at least building civilian factories and building infrastructure in your resource producing areas where you get your steel, where you get your tungsten, where you get your aluminum. That is so important. And you didn't do that. So I'm thinking you built a bunch of military factories. You've got a fair few, but 
91 mils, still not that wonderful. Infantry equipment's all right. Support equipment, okay, okay. Uh, I wouldn't be building light tanks in 1941. Really, I just, just don't. Mediums, all right. Mechanized, I'm really not a fan of mechanized. I prefer to just use motorized unless I'm feeling very, very fancy. In this case, yeah, I, I, I don't think we'll be, we'll be very fancy. Logistics, very bad. Thousands of everything short. All right then, recruit and deploy. So you got 20 divisions queued up. We're never getting these deployed, at least not the first couple of months. So I'm gonna delete everything except maybe this division. We might be able to get one rifle division out and that's it. All the other equipment is going to reinforcements and garrisons. Templates. Uh, this is your infantry. Good. I like this, but we don't have the equipment to sustain this. We have to budget. We have to shrink to our budget. And in this case, that means we're going to get rid of the artillery because I don't think we can afford it. And I am also going to remove the cavalry recon. It hurts our defense a little bit, but... Honestly, recon's not that good, and I'd rather have the support equipment available so our units are more or less at fighting strength. So we are bringing this back to a very, very bare minimum rifle division. So 18 combat with infantry, with support artillery and engineers. And I think we can actually afford to keep these guys, more or less. I'm going to delete all of the orders. Just everything gets deleted. And then I'm going to manually reassign every single division so that they line up with field marshals in the right place. I'm going to have a northern front and a southern front and they'll meet somewhere around this area just, just to keep things organized. I'll do that off camera because it's tedious and takes a long time, but I'll, I'll show you when I get it done. I am also going to split off any tanks that you have and bring them back to Moscow for the defense of Moscow and a couple of fast units if we have tanks in the south. I see a couple of tanks in the south. I'm going to rush them over to Crimea to either defend the straight crossing here or if I have an opportunity to push back to this tile and just set up a defense so we can at least hold on to Crimea. It's not that great, but it has population and it's our main naval base in the region. I'll also bring these divisions back home or I will delete them so the equipment goes back into our stockpile and becomes useful, but I think we have time to railroad them back home. I'm not sure if I want to go straight to total mobilization and get our economy going or if I want to spend 100 political power to get Konya first for the reduction. I, I think I need to stabilize the front before I focus on the economy. So I'm going to get Konyev first and none of these other guys really matter. Could replace Voroshilov, but that's not going to make a difference at this point. Yeah, I'm grabbing Konyev just for extra reduction enemy air support. We have nothing. Oh, you didn't grab military reorganization. Oh, it's not that terrible, but it does lock us out of a couple of good focuses. I can't afford to take this one right now. It makes our army even worse, so it's unlucky. And he never really done anything of the Stalin focuses. They're really powerful. You also did nothing with address internal affairs. There's so much stability here. Stability is so good. You got none of it. Production. So I don't need that much on artillery. I don't also don't need that much on infantry equipment. We reduced our cost a lot. Guns, we might still need a lot of. So I'll leave that going, I guess. Light tanks, won't need that many. I'll keep a little bit of production going for light tanks since we do have light tank divisions that I haven't been able to convert. Same for the mech equipment and a couple more trucks, mostly because our trucks are gonna get bombed. And then we'll make a very big effort towards anti-air. We need a lot of anti-air. We have none. And if we're playing no air, we at least want anti-air. Anything fresh is going to get pumped into medium tanks. I'll look at the design in a bit, but medium tanks is what we'll need to do our counter eventually. So this is a very budget setup. Nothing fancy, no air. And what are we making? So this tank isn't terrible. Bit on the expensive side and it's really, really slow. I don't like how slow it is. I can make it speed a little higher, but mm, not as good as I'd like it to be. Made a couple of changes. It's a lot faster now. It's a little bit cheaper. It's defense is a little lower, but armor, eh, 
it'll do. It'll do. It's by no means optimal, but I think this will do for what we need it to do. Ideally, I can hold these railway lines, but I don't think I can. I really don't think I can. I'm gonna lose Kursk. Probably gonna lose Orel and Bryansk. I can try to hold them, but I don't, I don't think I will. And then the southern defense, I need to fall back a little. So I hold Rostov, and then we go around the river near Stalingrad, back up, just to give us a little bit of time to breathe, to reorganize, and... And we'll see from there, Lipetsk, and then up to Tula and Kaluga, I guess. And then make this front uh, link up here, more or less. All right, after military organization, I have two full army groups of, well, quite terrible units, but we'll convert them all to infantry. Oh God, I can't afford it. Uh, this is gonna suck so much, but it's cleaner. It will be better in the long run. So plenty of divisions. They're just really under equipped. I have 13 armored divisions that I am rushing to the appropriate positions, mostly the gap near Moscow and uh, a couple towards Crimea and one full army of infantry that is kind of not assigned to a field marshal. So I'm just rushing them to that gap near Moscow as well. And then I will disperse them from there to appropriate positions. And under Zukov, I have concentrated the members. These 13 divisions are named after channel members I will name more divisions after channel members once I've decided where the elite troops lie because only the best are good enough to bear the names of these channel members look at these these are the heroes who will turn the tide of war oh god I really really hope they do anyway if you want your name featured on one of these divisions or one of the other divisions consider joining this channel with a membership and you too can join the battlefield I'm just hoping this reorganization works as for focuses, I'll stick with Tankograd and go from there. I'm thinking we're going to go with internal affairs so I can get my stability up. Stability is usually good. Yeah, I'm thinking stability. Intelligence agents. You don't have... What? How do you not have an intelligence agency by this point? What? But you've beheaded the snake. The longer I look at this, the worse it gets. Tanks. Not great. Low on organization, so I'm going to expand. Mechanized, I guess. God, I hate doing this. So 30 combat with is going to be better for your tanks. Expensive, but eh. Yeah, I'm going to need to build railways to make up for the connections I'm about to break. Also upgrade a couple of my other connections because your railway network's really Really not all that fleshed out. Railway network, really important. Supply is, well, everything. So if I can organize the northern defense, I don't have to look at it too much. Just need to make sure they don't take any supply hubs. I can keep supply flowing. Make sure that the areas are covered. I'm going to lose so many trucks to uh, logistical strikes because I don't have an air force. So it's going to suck. Yeah, I'm not going to do Tankograd. I'm simply going to do addressing internal affairs and grab some bonus. Well, I, I need bonuses, I need stability. This is gonna be the better choice. Addressing internal affairs, that one finishes quickly, gets me stability, gets me political power, should be enough to, I think, go to total mobilization. I wish there was a way to forbid the AI from moving through certain areas because the AI is constantly trying to redeploy units through the front. It's so annoying to babysit. And some of these areas just don't have any supply. I am going to be wasting a whole lot of trucks trying to supply everything. Trucks and trains, I don't have an industry. Oh, I am not having fun right now. Oh, I'm gonna lose another unit. I won't be able to withdraw. Well, North seems fine. South should survive contact with the enemy. They'll be at the edge of their supply line. I've had a little bit of time to just get some entrenchment in. The river line's gonna be okay. Gonna counterattack with the tanks here and secure Crimea. Yeah, we should be able to secure Crimea. And then just hope I can keep the Black Sea. I'm getting naval invaded. I, I don't have the equipment to deploy more men right now, so I can't get port guards. I, I don't have <laughs> reserves for anything. I'm seeing a lot of green bubbles. Troops are gonna start filtering in. I do you redeploy like this? Just stop so yeah mostly green bubbles now troops are redeploying still but if i can keep this stable i can clap back mostly because in a lot of places the germans are now in a disadvantageous position supply wise like in the south here they don't have any hubs i believe so these guys should all be starving same around moscow there are well, there are a couple of hubs but they haven't captured them yet or they're too far away from them like this bulge here. They don't really have the strength to push now that there are Soviet troops in position. And in the north, we still hold 
the Stalin line. We still hold the river and if I can babysit it enough, should be able to hold. And then I'm gonna train tanks, train more troops, just more of everything. And we are going to send our steamroller west once it's ready. We also made friends with Turkey. Let's see if they'll send us guns because we're gonna need them. All right, Turkey will send us guns. That's that's a good start. And maybe Japan is gonna be willing to go to war with the uh, Germans as well. Let's quickly look at casualties while we're here. So we have lost 1.4 million men. That's a lot, but the Soviet Union can take it. We don't really have a good industry. Like we have probably less than half of what the Germans do. Troop wise, yeah, they also outnumber us, but they have taken about a similar amount of casualties. Long term, I can outlast them. But in terms of what they're fielding right now, I think I'm fielding less than half of their number. So I need more men, a lot more men, which means guns, a lot more guns. All right, internal affairs is done. Go on, go on. There we go, that means 150 political power. Total mobilization, the entire nation is now focused on the defense effort. That should give me a bunch of extra factories, yes. First order of business, get the railways, then we'll get more military factories. I just forgot to check your research. This is the first time I've checked your research. So what are we doing? Ah, radar, not great. I'd rather probably start getting one of these techs or maybe even fuel techs, but I don't think you had by blood alone active because nothing happened with the air. It's okay, we're not gonna do anything thing with the air tanks. Okay, so you're working on 1943 mediums way ahead of time, but you're almost done. So might as well get those. Artillery is good, but you didn't do anything to AA. That's going to be my priority. Then infantry equipment is also all right. So most of your research has been good, except for the air. I, I, I don't think you had to buy blood loan installed. Industry is also good. Eh, I can't complain. Well, I can always complain. Just I won't complain. Considering our production is going well, well, within 100 days, our deficit will be filled out. So I'm thinking agit prop first, go from there to get positive heroism, war heroes, or even the other side. I'm not sure which is the best side. Let me know in the comments which you think is the best side of these two. I tend to go with war heroes, so positive heroism, but maybe collectivist propaganda is the, the choice to make here. So let me know what you think in the comments I should be picking here. <laughs> That's gonna be my winning ticket. Japan has declared war on Germany over all of these possessions. Now, that doesn't change anything immediately for me, but it does mean Japan is willing to entertain somewhat friendly relations with us. It means Germany has to devote attention to the far east, so it's gonna be funneling a lot of troops into this area. Their ships are gonna get sunk, they're gonna have supply issues, it's going to hurt the German war machine in the long run, and maybe just maybe Japan can steal some of this stuff, and then I can trade with Japan. I can now probably trade with Manchukuo as well for stuff, so good! All right, so Tanatuva has troops I can borrow. If Mongolia wants to send me some, I'm gonna take those as well, and we're gonna set up some port guards, because because I am not going to wait around until I get naval invaded. It was nice while it lasted, but the naval invasions have arrived. Kuban region and Ukraine. So they'll be hitting me in this area as long as they don't. Yeah, I've got most of these ports guarded. I think I can hold this if I'm fast, but I don't have the equipment to deploy additional men yet. I really was hoping we'd have naval supremacy in the region, or at least have submarines do some, some decent raiding. Oh well, it is what it is. I'll, I'll just have to use the members. Great defensive cause. Fortunately, the local armor was able to do what needed doing, so this is contained. Boy, outfitting my divisions with anti-air is gonna be expensive. Yeah, that's gonna be real expensive. I need the Soviet industries to really get to work, unfortunately. It is what it is. I'm still prioritizing railways, so at least everything, every hub has a level 2 connection, and so I can get Sevastopol connected to the mainland network, because getting convoys across here all the time is just going to lead to them being sunk. Don't want that. Stability needs to go up. War support needs to go up. Everything has to go up. Oh, the amount of cast damage we're taking here is just... Not great. And the combat lasts forever because I can continuously funnel troops into these red bubbles. But it is getting expensive. It's getting expensive fast. Not so much in terms of manpower because for some reason we've not lost that much manpower. But uh, the guns, the guns and the tanks and everything. Still though, the industry is picking up. We are producing. We are actually producing at a respectable rate. Just need a whole lot of toad AA and then I can outfit my units in a way that they won't just explode on contact with the enemy. Start by adding some anti-air to my tanks. I am a little confused though, because the Germans are pushing hard here around Moscow, where they don't even have that much supply. They're also continuously attacking the north. 
northern section where I'm strong and they haven't even walked past Milarovo. I'm going to assume it's because there is literally no supply for them here. All right, so we no longer have desperate measures. I'm working on Tankograd now. Factories is what I need. I think we'll pick up the next word. Keep getting lost in this giant tree. I think we need lessons of war next. That is going to make things a lot easier for us. And then we just beef up our army as best we can. Might pick up war heroes as well, as well as the patriarch of all Russia. Stability is a little less terrible, but war support still not great. The casual the bombing, it's all taking its toll. So we have a lot of work cut out for us, but we're holding. Training up more troops. The more men I can get out onto the field, the better. The center might need a little bit of reinforcement. And then, then we can start planning our counteroffensive. Unfortunately, I lost like a couple more tiles, maybe one. Yeah, I think I lost one more tile here, but it really did stop after that. Germany actually stopped attacking. They've advanced, but they just haven't really attacked me ever since so I'm feeling confident that I'll be able to hold this line and this is actually where I'm gonna start my counterattack from soon I think it's time that we start reclaiming some territory bit by bit the Germans are overstretched and at the very edge of their supply line along large portions of the front and we're gonna try and push out wherever I can it shouldn't be too difficult to do something with my armor here all of these divisions are really really week so if I can get a couple of good moves in I should be able to get a couple of juicy encirclements in the more the better so let's try to get some carving done it's not much but I think I should be able to do a real number on the AI here especially considering just how weak all of their divisions are let's just pin them in place make sure the reinforcements move in and I think we can cut them off should be able to cut them off I'll just cut them off there let's not get too ambitious come on they've got zero org is it just their air that allows them to keep fighting no all right uh, <laughs> it's not as much as i wanted to kill but it's something these germans are so weak but the air it has to be the air We're like oh nothing we do seems to work just push them back get these assholes out of my country oh they've bombed me so much i'm out of trains i need to make more of these armor trains at least they don't get bombed as much i also fear i'm gonna end up losing smolensk eventually if i do i'm in trouble because that would give all of these units that are currently experiencing supply issues a massive boost in supply well at the same time i'm getting any and all supply denied to me just through sheer air power. Oh, everything's red. Everything is red. There is no air force and it's annoying. Congratulations, Ricardo. You get to have a medium tank division. I need to switch things up. I need strength and I'm having a very hard time doing this glorious counterattack I had planned. Let's just grab this one first, more entrenchment and more damage reduction. And then I can go with the commissars. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch out of mass assault. It's not doing me any favor. I'm just gonna straight up go for superior firepower. I think that is the correct choice here. Long term, that is gonna pay its dividends. And that concludes my control of the Black Sea. Can someone please explain to me this? Because this, this makes no sense. How the Italian Navy got into the Black Sea despite the Bosporus Strait being here and locked. Same for the Dardanelles. They're locked. They're not supposed to be friendly. Turkey is not supposed to let Italy in here. And with Italy pulling its shenanigans, I still don't know why they're allowed to. They are starting their naval invasions. Fortunately, I have my tanks nearby, so this should not be much of an issue. It's just going to be super annoying. I know I harp on about this all the time, but please, for the love of God, if you're playing a major nation, it either make sure you have an air force or make sure you've invested in anti-air because what you've done here, horrible. Anyway, the Italians have showed up. Let's just throw them back into the sea. Unfortunately, we stopped the Italian naval invasion for now, but this is going to be such an annoying situation. I could, at this point, probably just do a compilation of naval invasion fails. Now it's the French. Oh, I misclicked. So now it's the French giving me a hard time. Fine. Right, so entirely unexpectedly, an infantry division making a diversionary attack managed to push across the river. That's good. That means my tanks can go there. And I actually have some room to maneuver here, I think. So I'm going to try and push out now. I am fighting on the red, blood red sky. So I honestly don't expect much to come of this. But I'm going to try, by God, I'm going to try to punch a hole here. See if I can make my way south. See if I can create an encirclement. Meanwhile, I... I got desperate and I am researching air. 
because I need something in the sky to counter all of this. But uh, yeah, like I said, I'm, g I'm getting desperate. I just don't know what to do. Hey, first encirclement or first true encirclement of the campaign. All right, it's it's not much, but I can use this as a staging ground to start my offensive from. All right, so it's the south where we start movement. I'm also going to start recruiting additional force. Uh, hmm. Can't really afford them. I'm gonna start getting more tanks. These will all, once again, be members. Yes, members, I will be naming you. Oh God, that may not have been much, but it felt good to spit in the face of the enemy there. That also gives me a base of operations on the right side of the river, or the left side, no matter how it depends on how you look at it, stop my operations from, and I can try cutting south towards Rostov, cut off a significant section of the German line. Rest of the front, still holding, enemy keeps throwing themselves cells at me, but it is ultimately pointless. These divisions are super well entrenched by now. Oh, it's working. I am edging my way ever closer. I am going to get there. I promise you that much. I am going to make my way to Rostov. I am punching right on through. All right, I'll have to, I'll have to adjust. I dug too greedily, dug too deep. Oh, looks like this is turning into a catastrophe. Pulling out, I am pulling out. I need to find another vector of attack then. Problem is I cannot mass my own counterattacks because even in my own territory on my own supply, Supply hubs, there is no supply. It's just German air completely shredding me. There's nothing I can do. I can hold very favorable terrain, I I, I guess, but there is nothing I can do to counterattack. Nothing. This is hopeless. Whenever I try fancy maneuvers, like here, let's try to push out of Crimea, well, it, it suddenly turns out they have a billion divisions here. They're not going to get away with it this time. There. I'm just gonna dump down another 20 divisions, assign them to the field marshal, any general will do. And I will try my damnedest to hold this door open. The amount of the visions they've got here is also quite stupid. So, like, like, what, what is it with the German AI? Is, is do they not have brakes? Or is it just all gas, no brakes? They are some sort of super villain? Yeah, and even this breakout attempt from Chimera is pointless because again there is no supply here. Now I need to get my tanks moving. Let me get the tanks to start pushing now. I think I have a bit of a, a hole to put units through. All right, now the infantry support armor go up. And with a little luck, we have an encirclement. With a little luck, come on. Yeah, okay. It's the first thing I've got. Okay, 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 okay. This, this is not much, but it is so good. Now I just need to close it. No! Oh, for God's sake, they pushed it back open. How does that make any sense? These units have nothing. They are running on less than fumes and they are still able to just resist this. Still, it's a pocket again. It's not the absolutely massive pocket it could have been, but this is going to hurt. Oh, you, you're shitting me. <sighs> Is this some sort of supercharged AI? Is this an AI designed specifically to screw with me? Is, is there something I'm missing here? I think we can crush this now. And the AI still has so many airplanes in the area that it's difficult to even clean up a pocket like this. Oh, but they're gonna feel it. This is like 50, 60 divisions all told. So once this dies, I wanna check their casualties. Oh, and they're gone. So they're now up to 9.7 million. I've killed 9.2 million Germans. Good number in that pocket, I'd say. A good number. And it does seem like without massively detrimental terrain penalties and the like, I am actually able to move and redeploy my armor. We're actually able to push. Tanks are moving. Tanks are moving. Oh, I'm gonna make it to Kharkov. If I take Kharkov, I cut the railway line. Pretty much everything down south here has no more supply. And then I cut back towards my own line from Kharkov. And I start pushing out from here. So these units should start working their way there. And now the tanks drive there. Oh, this is gonna be glorious. If we can pull that off, that is going to be glorious. Just need to make sure I don't screw up now. That is imperative. Don't screw up now. Oh my god, we're gonna do it. We're gonna link up, so attack there, attack there. I just need the infantry to redeploy everywhere. <laughs> all the things everywhere all at once. This is the kind of victory I need to turn this campaign around. The jaws of the trap are closing. The jaws of the trap are closing. But is it enough? Is it fast enough? It is fast enough. We did it! Oh yeah! I think this is actually smaller than the, uh, first one we had, but it feels a lot more impactful. 
<laughs> this is, it was such a meme run. Oh, it feels good getting a couple of these wins in after, what, three years of losing and just getting pushed back and stalemating. But this is the tide turning. This is the tide turning. And we're going to be needing to hand out a whole lot of medals here. So these guys have probably earned their pay. Medals for all of you. That was another 50-ish German divisions. <laughs> nice. Advancing the spearhead up towards Kursk. And the second pincer will move down south from Tula towards Orel. With a little luck, we can meet in the middle. Oh, uh, one more tile. Uh, one more tile. Just gotta hold the door open while we drive. Yes! Okay, so that is the center, I think. Yeah, that is the center cut off. Uh, organize the tanks to hold the door and smash it down. I am proud of this work. This will need to be my game plan. If we are to win this, just cut the enemy down to size. Germans, meanwhile, up to 11 million casualties. Oh yeah, this one is looking very juicy once again. And I think they're gone. Yep, that is them deleted as well. Okay then. Well, 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 I think we've cut their army in half with those three pockets. All right, so we've made it to Bryansk. Let's see if we can push further than that. Those look like we'll link up. And we've linked up. Oh, baby, 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 baby. Armor, armor, where do I use the armor? The armor needs to hold the door open. That's my preferred place for the armor. Oh, that is beautiful, isn't it? That is beautiful. And it's gone. Look at that. So December 44, we've struck back. Not quite what I wanted by now, but better than I had started to think was possible. As you can tell, the terrain really isn't optimal for offensives in the winter. It does look like Japan is going to end up losing. That might be an issue in the future. Um, but, you know, I, I can always train more troops. Just, just start training up reserves for my far eastern front that will eventually emerge if I don't kill the Germans quickly enough. Another day, another glorious offensive. Every hit hurts the enemy. Every blow a step closer to ultimate victory. I'm also going to do some collaboration governments on Germany, mostly because it's going to be a tough fight as it is. I should probably have started that a little sooner, but if you can do collaboration governments without hurting your economy too much, I definitely recommend it. The easier they are to capitulate, the better. Plus, you know, the compliance is great. Fortunately, the members are just absolute chads going through the Germans like they aren't even there. This is why we built these medium tanks. And other situations like this one where you take a supply hub but you're not able to take the railway or a connecting river, just make sure you hold that corridor and quickly build a little railway. It doesn't even have to be very high level, just quickly build a railway into your own network, plug that in and you can go from there. Just gonna make sure we keep the door open while that railway is being built. I mean, while I look for other opportunities. All right, doesn't look like I'll be able to punch through from the top. Supply is a continuous problem for us. Well, if I can't pull off the encirclement in the south, I'll get one in the center. Looks very good around Sumi, so crush that and have the armor continuously move, move, move towards the critical area. So if I can get the Kiev, I mean, that would be pretty amazing. Ah, I almost made it to Kiev. Let's see if I can get that railway gun, because technically that railway gun can't go anywhere. That section of railway is completely cut off from the rest of the German lines. Who knows, we might be able to capture a railway gun. A slightly smaller pocket, but still respectable. I think I'll divert my attention to the north, because yeah, this is a lot... Oh. What am I hearing? Naval invasion? Oh, Sevastopol, it's fine. So yeah, you can tell the south, this this offers opportunities, but the Germans are starving just as hard as I am, so I'm not really able to push much. So what I'm going to try is do some things up north. Hopefully the Germans and all and redeploy troops to deal with that, weakening the south, and keep cycling between the two just to keep the enemy on the back foot, and hopefully we'll eventually break their backs all right, so that is entirely cut off. Good. Now the armor can clean up. Oh boy, that's going to hurt the Germans a lot because there is still quite a bit of stuff trapped here. All right, another naval invasion. Mostly trash, so don't really need to worry about it. Looks like the north is wide open, so uh, why not go for a little field trip, see if I can capture, well, just try to capture as much as I can. The supply hubs will hurt the enemy badly and then uh, maybe I can counterattack from the north as well see if I can get another juicy pocket out because I've become obsessed with inflicting as many casualties on the Germans as possible I I don't know how they can maintain this they still have millions of men but they uh, they're on adults all adults serve and they're down to a million in reserve so eventually something is got to give I'll just brute force it I, I'm gonna force my tanks through here <laughs> we'll take a lot of casualties but the Germans have really hurt themselves in the 
constant attacks on my line. So maybe, 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 maybe I can get to Kiev. If I can get to Kiev, I have supply. But no, of course not. They always manage to just reinforce it with just barely enough troops to get there in time. It's it's annoying. It's just really annoying. I I just want to end this campaign on a win. I've I've fought too hard to give up now. I just want to win. I just don't know how. I did just spot an opening here. This is a really weak division because they just attack me. Counterattack them. I can push across the river. If I can push across the river, I can get troops moving. I'm going to move my tanks into this direction. I'm going to expand the front from here. Hopefully, I can make something happen now. I'm about to drive into Memel at least. So to the north, slight success. Good encirclement as well in Lepia or Lipaya, whatever. That's a good amount of divisions we've got trapped in that port. So I'm going to keep hitting it. Kill all of those guys. I'm Another one of the Baltics liberated. Let's keep moving. If I can take Kaunas, maybe I can uh, link up here, create another pocket. If I can meet up in Wilno, that'll be great. Königsberg is about to fall as well. And this is just a giant pocket waiting to happen. I am not able to close it. <laughs> I wish I could. I'm just not able to close it. Not yet, at least. Maybe if I can bring the tanks in from the other side and see some success that way, that would be great. All right, I managed to get my tanks into the enemy back line. It's certainly not pretty. It's, it's not the most efficient way of doing things, but I am able to really wreck them <laughs> from the rear now. Hopefully that's going to cause enough chaos for me to eventually be able to just click a button and tell my army to start moving forward because I am tired of this campaign. Have I told you that before? I see meme potential here by just driving my tanks into Germany itself. Huh. I've just been nuked. Right, so the Germans have nukes. 1946. I... I'm not sure I'm actually even going to be continuing this campaign for much longer. It stopped being fun about two hours ago, so... And we've taken Berlin by planning. I should have done this earlier, just drowned them in Soviet bodies. Yes, a lot of casualties, but Germans coming out of this far, far worse than I. This is disgusting and I hate doing it this way, but it's really all I have left in my arsenal to throw around. And Germany has capitulated, giving me very big, very ugly borders. Oh boy. All right, I don't think the French have much in them. Fall of Paris. Uh, we just need to knock out Italy. I think. No, Italy and Nation Francaise. So France and Italy have to die and then I won. And there go the French. They're gone. That opens the door into Italy and that's gonna be it. All right, so we've broken through the Alpine line. Rush, 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 rush. Knock out Italy. Italy usually is the weakest of the bunch. Not, not counting the French, of course. So we just need to knock out Italy and we get a nice peace deal. I'm thinking we paint Europe red. There goes Rome and Italy is about to go as well for the rest. There we go. We have defeated the Axis after well, uh, a pretty, pretty horrific battle. So I'm thinking we make this nice and pretty and then we'll end it. And with this horrific Terrific peace deal that took way too long to set up. We have done it. We've redrawn the map of Europe to look something very, very red. I, I was generous. I gave the UK the UK back because they were apparently stuck here <laughs> with nothing after some weird peace deal. And we have a big Soviet occupation zone of Germany. We have mostly neat borders, I'd say. We got all of the friends are back. So we've, we've got Bulgaria, Romania, Hungary, Yugoslavia, Czechoslovakia. There's Poland. I couldn't give them their historical borders, so I decided to get Hinterpommern and, and what is this, Kash Kashubia and uh, Silesia. They didn't think Germany deserved those, so I took them. A very nice, very red world, but it's 1947. I'm not going to continue playing anymore. What I have learned, though, is that sometimes brute force works. And of course, I want to thank each and every one of our members. I only got to print 20 of you this time, but more will follow in future once I manage to automate this one. So look at these brave, brave heroes who have broken the line time and time again. If you want to see your name featured in Bitter Steel videos, why not click that button down there next to the subscribe button says join and contribute to the channel. Thank you very much.